places I don't want to visit again. But don't worry, this video is not about Iraq, Afghanistan or South Sudan. The places we're about to discuss in this video are actual places that people visit and complain about. I want to discuss these places with you and really in no particular order. So it doesn't mean like I hate it one place more than another. First up, we have Egypt. Now, when you think about Egypt, you know, you probably remember the beautiful pyramids at Giza and very likely safaris, you know, riding on a camel, possibly swimming in the Red Sea. All these fun activities that people enjoy when they take a vacation to Egypt. However, it's not all sunshines and unicorns. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, when I visited Egypt was almost I think 11, 12 years ago, it was a really tough time. And let me explain to you why I'm saying this. First, you have to be really careful with what you eat because fruits and veggies in Egypt, they wash them with tap water, I guess. And tap water in Egypt has a lot of bacteria. I only ended up eating bananas once, only once, and I had diarrhea immediately. Same goes for tap water. I only brushed my teeth with tap water and I got diarrhea immediately. I know you think, well, you should have known this before, you know, I should have researched it. Yeah, I guess so. But even with water from the bottle, it is not safe in Egypt. And there's actually a lot of data behind this statement because they have recently tested water from the bottle from multiple companies. And they found that the water contained, I think, plastic and bad bacteria. Anyway, the water was not clean and it was actually not safe to drink. Now you may think, well, if you can't even drink tap water, brush your teeth with tap water, then what should you do? Great question. And I don't have the answer for this, you know. <laughs> There's probably no water from the bottle in Egypt, at least not that I'm aware of. Maybe it exists, maybe not, probably a lot more expensive. But then again, where does the water come from, you know? It comes from Egypt's water resources, which is mainly from the Nile, right? A solution would probably be to just drink imported water, which will probably be very expensive. And I don't remember too much about it. So food safety, was definitely a big concern for me back then. Another concern was the time of the year I visited Egypt. I visited Egypt during Ramadan. This is the fasting period of Muslims. Now, I'm not a Muslim, I'm a Westerner taking a vacation to Egypt. So I did know that they were undergoing this phase. You know, it's a yearly thing, but I did not know that it would be a big deal if I drank water on the streets. What happened was that we took a trip to Cairo, okay, that's when I went to Giza. And I remember myself walking down the streets of Cairo. It was during August and September. I arrived in late August and stayed until mid-September. And it was very hot, like sizzling hot. And as a Westerner, I'm from a pretty cool country. It just wasn't pleasant to walk around and not stay hydrated, you know? It worked like this, okay? I drank half a liter of water and I sweated it out immediately. At a normal day there, I think I drank probably three to four liters of water, like easily, easily, right? So if you're outside for a long time, you gotta stay hydrated, you need to drink a lot of water. So I remember myself walking down the streets, drinking water, you know, I had these small water bottles with me, I had always at least one, sometimes even two, and I put one in my pocket and I held the other one in my hand and I was just walking around like this and the locals looked at me like, well, how can you drink water? And it got to a point when people actually approached me, they're like, don't you know it's Ramadan? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not Muslim. I'm Christian and I'm, I just need to drink water. And they did not understand that and it almost got physical with one person. They felt very insulted that I did not respect their religion. And that's, I think, probably a mistake that I made. I think no matter where you go, you need to respect the religion of the host country. But I didn't think that this would be such a big issue. When I finally got to Giza, I will never forget, we drove up by car and there was a lot of people on the streets blocking cars, you know, because they wanted to extract money. They're like, well, all the, these people are going up to Giza, to the pyramids, you know, let's charge them. So it's very corrupt, very corrupt. There is street violence taking place and it's very possible that even if you go by taxi or even if you go by tour, but I think if you go by tour, they probably will know how to manage it. But if you go up there on your own, 
you definitely need to be careful because they want to pull you over and they will ask for money and if you don't pay they will not let you go and then i'll never forget at the pyramids at giza you go in and they scan you it's pretty much the same concept as at the airport you know i don't remember taking off my shoes but i remember putting out everything i had in my pockets i took off my belt and they also checked me you know to make sure i don't have any weapons on me and they asked me some questions and then you know what i did they took all the money i had literally all the money i had mainly coins i had some notes inside my wallet they took all of it and they started yelling it's, it's like what are you doing here what are you doing here you know they're they want to scare you they really want to scare you and that was national police national police did that to me in egypt overall i did enjoy my time in egypt um, i really enjoyed the pyramids it was phenomenal what an experience i did enjoy swimming in Hurghada. that's where i stayed it's a resort city on the red sea it was beautiful the water was warm beautiful scenery just a very nice experience and like i said i did like cairo it was really nice but would i go there again it's difficult i'd definitely avoid the tap water i would avoid eating fruits and veggies and i'll definitely be a lot more careful should i decide to visit giza again next up we have cambodia a lot of people have visited cambodia in the past and they did like the place you know they want to go back but nowadays cambodia is not the same as it was 10 years ago or six years ago why is that well because the chinese have taken over sihanogville they're taking over Simrip. Um, there's a lot of construction going on in both cities from what I've heard. I have personally not visited Cambodia since 2018, but when I was in Sihanouk in 2018, I already noticed that things have changed. The landscape changed. There's a lot of Chinese development going on. Lots of money is flowing into China. I do think they're also building a port in Sihanouk or they already have built a port. So the city has changed. And the same goes for Simrip as well. Now, if you go to Cambodia, what's left? Kampong Phnom Penh, right? Because Sihanoukville, I think there's now, uh, over the past maybe five years or so, or seven years, roughly 80,000 to 100,000 Chinese migrated to the city. And from what you hear, most foreigners have left. So did the locals. So there's really only Chinese left in that city. Anyway, this is not my main concern. I wanna talk a little bit about the experiences I had in Cambodia. I have lived in Sihanoukville and I have visited the place many times before and I have also spent a good amount of time in Phnom Penh. I've been to Simrip. So I know the country, I'm well aware. And one of the main problems in Cambodia is food safety and standards. There's been numerous cases where children got food poisoned from bread. You know, it, it's like almost impossible to believe how can you get food poisoned from bread? Usually it's meats, you know, meats and, and dietary product that create food poisoning. But in Cambodia, anything is possible. <laughs> It really is. And I'll never forget, once I ate at a beach restaurant in Sihanoukville, you know, they had like three, four, five uh, restaurants there and two of them were pretty packed. You know, there was not one table available. So we were like, you know what, let's just go to the one that was empty. Very bad idea. Never do that. You know, if everyone chooses the place that's packed, then that's probably where the food is good and safe. But the thing is, we were really hungry and um, there was just nothing else available. I don't remember if there was nobody sitting there or one table, but it was pretty empty. So we went to that place and we sat down. He gave us the menu and you know how at the beach it's a little bit darker than if you eat in the city. So we used our phones to take a look at the menu and we ended up ordering beef steak with French fries and I think tomatoes. And it took a long time for the restaurant to prepare the food. So we were waiting and chit-chatting and just hoping that the food would arrive because I don't remember because at that time we had visited Cambodia and I think, I think it was the first day which is really, really bad timing because, you know, you expect to have some good food, you know, when you had a long trip and, you know, you just want to get some food and then probably go to your hotel to sleep. We ended up waiting like probably 30 to 45 minutes and finally the food arrived and took a bite and it was cold. And after tasting it, I can definitely tell that it was not beef. I don't know what it was. I do think it was pork. And the problem is that I saw like some brownish gravy and I thought it was gravy, but it was blood. So what we got served there was 
pretty much medium to raw pork if it was not completely raw. It was really cold and it did not taste like cooked, you know, and you have to get at least one bite to really know what you're eating. And it was really, really bad. Raw pork can kill you, okay? It was just horrible. Went to the hotel, felt bad immediately after, it didn't take too long, ended up vomiting, you know, the tongue turned white because I drank water and I tried to eat some more food, but the body rejected everything, you know, and then went to the doctor and I showed my tongue and it, it was white and it's like, oh, not good. And you need to get the uh, transfusions. So it was just a horrible experience. Took almost a week to recover from that until I really felt strong again, you know, had more strength and it, it was just a really bad experience. And that was not the only time that happened in Cambodia. It also happened to me in Phnom Penh with pizza. I did not spend a whole lot of time in Cambodia. I mean, not years, but it was a couple of months and definitely like almost every time I took a trip there, got food poisoning or diarrhea or had just really, really bad food. So in Cambodia, you really need to know where you eat. And the last place I wanted to talk with you about is a very obscure place that not a lot of people have visited, not a lot of people know even exists. It's a very weird, in an awkward location city. The city I'm talking about is Pontianak, Indonesia. If you look it up on the map, you will see that it's on the island of Borneo. So at that time I lived in Kuching, Sarawak, which is East Malaysia, a place also not a lot of people have visited or lived in. It's a very obscure island. I did enjoy my time in Malaysia back then. You know, it was like 10, 11 years ago. Phenomenal time in Kuching, really, really great time. Back then I had a girlfriend and we ended up taking the bus from Kuching to Pontianak. It was a good experience once we were there and, you know, we ended up enjoying, you know, like we had food, went for massages, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. So it was a good time. But getting there was horrific. And let me explain to you. So we took the bus and there's this border crossing because on the island of Borneo, right, you have Malaysia to the north and you have Indonesia to the south and there's obviously the border. So if you go by bus, you know, you have to go through the border and uh, we all got off the bus and checked our passport. And as soon as it was our turn, you know, we already kind of felt some weird vibes. And I think it's pretty familiar that Indonesians don't like Chinese a lot. And supposedly, I'm not talking about the island of Bali, okay, that's something entirely different. But the experience I had in Pontianak, I did not have anywhere else in my life, ever, ever. So at that border, it was just horrific. So they pulled us in for questioning. You know, we're going there on a trip. You know, we are visitors. We're not looking to do anything bad. And they just pulled me in and I'll never forget, uh, started yelling at me like nobody ever yelled at me. And they took my passport and he threw it on his desk. And he's like, where are you from? What are you doing here? Why do you want to come to Indonesia? Why do you want to go to Pontianak? You know, after I told him we had a hotel booked and this and that. And um, very racist police officers, immigration officers, whatever. Very racist, um, made some really bad comments. Um, and that ha happened to us, you know. It was just everything but funny. And like I said, it took us in for questioning and the whole thing lasted for almost an hour. And I almost lost my patient. I'm like, please, can you finish this? Because I do want to get out of here. I want to get back on the bus and just go to our hotel in Pontianak, Indonesia. But it didn't seem to be possible. You know, and after long questioning and torturing us, and then he told me to sit down and wait. And then they ended up discussing it internally. And I don't know what they talk because I don't speak the local language, but I know that it was nothing good about us. And it almost felt like they won't let us cross or they were looking for us to make a mistakes, to get aggressive or something like that so they could arrest us and just some really, really, really weird stuff. And the person I was with at that time was Chinese and um, they tortured her a lot a lot. You're Chinese, right? Like, what are you doing here? You're Chinese, right? Just, you know, that experience left a really bitter taste in my stomach. And anyway, after about half, uh, 45 minutes, you know, we were out of there. Thank God. What a blessing. And went back on the bus and headed to Pontianak. So we got off the bus and there was someone trying to steal our suitcase because, you know, they unloaded all the bags and it was dark and we didn't really see that much. And um, we were sitting, I think, at the very back of the bus and we came off a little bit later than others, you know, because you have to queue up and, and then, you know, they're just put out all the suitcases and um, turned out that someone wanted to steal our suitcases. 
it's just crazy. It was actually one of our suitcases. So he took it and then he just walked away. But it, the thing is, it was not a passenger. I think it was a guy on the motorbike. Um, but it, it was just really, really just a bad experience. And then we were trying to get a taxi. And it was also difficult because we're asking them, like, how much is it? You know, we showed them the address. I think we had it printed out back then because it was 2012 and you didn't really have iPhones back then, at least not in Southeast Asia. So I think we had it printed out and we showed the address or we had it written down. They were just coming up with ridiculous prices, you know. We, we kind of knew that before we arrived, like how much it is and stuff. And it, it was just really, really bad. But then at the end of the tunnel, there's always light, right? So we're waiting there and we were like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? It's just too frustrating. You know, this it's just getting worse and worse and worse. We can't even get to our hotel. We can't find anyone that can bring us for a reasonable amount. So we're like, oh, maybe we should just go back. You know, that's obviously not an option because there was no bus going back that late at night and we had to wait until the morning if we decided to do that, but we didn't do that. So we ended up waiting there and there was a woman in the car observing us and it was just a really crazy experience because she observed all of this and then she scrolled down the window and started talking to us and she was also Chinese. And she's like, well, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I saw everything. And, and we're like, well, this is not everything because there's actually more that happened before. And she's like, well, can I bring you to your hotel, this and that? And we were like, yeah, sure. Like, you know, you saw this generosity and um, it did feel good. You know, you can imme immediately tell if someone likes you if someone is authentic or not then we were like yeah let's just get into her car and let's just and she had two kids in, in the car too so we're like yeah that looks kind of safe you know and so she ended up bringing us to the hotel and then we talked and we exchanged numbers and that was a very nice person and right now today we're still friends we had a lot of bad luck and then finally met a good person and yeah at the time then in Pontianic was pretty decent that the food was pretty decent didn't actually stay too long I think it was only for like three to four days but we enjoyed the city and it was a good experience but it was a horrible experience getting there and um, everyone tortured us until we found her and then she rescued us from all this misery what are some of the worst places that you have visited or lived in have you been to any of the places I discussed in this video? Leave a comment below and let us know. Make sure to subscribe and turn on alerts to receive a notification when I upload the next video on digital nomad locations, visas, and travel updates. Before I let you go, I got two recommendations for you. One, I shot a video on the safest and cheapest countries to live in the world. If you want to watch this video, then click on the link that appears right here. Two, I shot another video on countries without COVID restrictions. If you want to watch this video, then click on the link right here. Thank you for watching.